I'm pioneer field agronomist Zach Forey. There's a disease that we've been seeing more and more commonly on corn called Goss's wilt. Goss's wilt is a bacterial disease. There's nothing you can spray for Goss's wilt. Fungicides control fungi, but since Goss's wilt is a bacteria, fungicides are not effective in controlling Goss's wilt. Goss's wilt reduces yield primarily by destroying photosynthetic leaf area of corn plants. The earlier that that disease comes in, the sooner it reduces that photosynthetic area and the more yield effect that it will have on corn plants. Goss's wilt that comes in later in the season or Goss's wilt that doesn't destroy very much leaf area will have little or no effect on corn yields. Plants that are significantly affected by Goss's wilt earlier in the year and have a significant amount of leaf area affected will show reduced ear size, maybe um, nosing back of the tips of those ears and just overall lower kernel size and that's what will cause yield losses. This is a relatively new disease to, to northwest Minnesota and eastern North Dakota. We've only been observing Goss's wilt for about the last five years or so in our region. Throughout our region, Goss's wilt pressure has generally been pretty low. The incidence has been pretty high. It's been pretty easy to find plants that are infected with Goss's wilt, but generally it's very small pockets of fields and the overall effect has been relatively minimal. However, we also have had some hotspot locations, localized regions where there's significant amount of Goss's wilt pressure. And in those particular areas, we have to watch the Goss's wilt tolerance of our hybrids that we're planting very closely. Goss's wilt potential is highest in fields that have had Goss's wilt the year before. So in particular on corn on corn fields, where there was Goss's in the field the year before, those are areas where we need to make sure that the hybrids we select have a high level of tolerance to Goss's wilt. Pioneer has an extensive characterization program for evaluating the tolerance of each hybrid to Goss's wilt. So make sure that you contact your local Pioneer sales professional or your field agronomist to make sure that you've got the appropriate Goss's wilt tolerance for your fields. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.